Okay, well, that leads us now to our science segment and to an important breakthrough for the 2.8 million people around the world who suffer from multiple sclerosis. Well, a recent study conducted in the United States has found the strongest evidence to date that contracting a common virus known as Epstein-Barr dramatically increases a person's chances of developing that rare disease. Well, to tell us more about it, I'm joined by our health editor, uh, Julia Seeger. Welcome to the programme, Julia. Uh, Epstein-Barr, a prime suspect for quite some time as a trigger for multiple sclerosis, uh, and quite a while now, um, that study has been, you know, undergone. Uh, what's different about this study? Well, the difference here, uh, Tom, is that scientists for the first time were able to access uh, the uh, medical records of about 10 million U.S. military soldiers that enlisted between uh, 1993 and 2013, and they had to do regular blood tests because for HIV testing. So it's the first time they, that we have such an important cohort of, of people. Now, eventually what happened is of those 10 million soldiers, 955 actually contracted or developed uh, multiple sclerosis. And of those 955, as you can see here, well, uh, all but one had previously been infected with this Epstein-Barr infection uh, and, and then went on to develop multiple sclerosis on average five years later. And this is why scientists were able to conclude that an Epstein-Barr infection uh, multiplies a person's risk of developing multiple sclerosis 32-fold. So that's actually very similar to uh, the increase in risk of developing lung cancer from heavy smoking. Okay, and 90% of people worldwide at some point or other uh, contract Epstein-Barr either because of herpes or mononucleosis. So how can they be so sure that Epstein-Barr is to blame? That's a very good question, actually. It's important to stress this because uh, it is a very common virus indeed. As you said, 90% of the world population will contract Epstein, uh, Epstein-Barr at one point. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to go on to develop uh, multiple sclerosis. And the study does leave many questions unanswered, such as why is it that one person out of 1,000 will develop multiple sclerosis after uh, an Epstein-Barr um, uh, infection? What happens to the other 999 uh, people? They don't answer the question of exactly what happens and how the body turns those T cells into killer cells because that's actually what happens during multiple sclerosis. As you know, Tom, it's an autoimmune uh, disease that attacks the nervous, um, uh, the central nervous system, but also the brain and the spinal cord. And so how does it actually happen? Well, as you know, in your blood, you have immune cells, T cells uh, that are, as you can see here, so on this diagram, this is a vein. And so you're going to have... Um, uh, T cells that are going to mutate that you can see here in green, and they're going to be able to pass the blood-brain barrier here in blue. Once they get there, they're going to start dilapidating what we call the myelin membranes, and those are actually the, the, the sheath of neurons. And when that happens, well, it creates debris, of course, and that creates plaques that come on your brain, and depending on where it is and how big it is, of course, it's going to seriously disrupt the information uh, that is coming from the nervous system. And that has many, it's going to cause many symptoms, so, such as, for instance, cognitive, visual, balance, and also motor disorders. So uh, the solution, it would appear, therefore, is to treat Epstein-Barr, the virus we've been talking about, to prevent multiple sclerosis? Actually, it's not that simple. Uh, so what this study says is the fact that Epstein-Barr is definitely a big risk factor in multiple sclerosis, but there are others. Uh, genetics could also come into play. As we know, it tends to run in families. There's also environmental factors such as smoking, obesity, uh, vitamin D deficiency, and also working at night. Now, researchers are, are pushing and pushing quite hard for a, a vaccine trial to be launched based on this study because they say it's the only way to really say in a definite way that Epstein-Barr is responsible and is to blame here. Now, there are two candidate vaccines um, that have just come out. I don't know if it's a coincidence, but just a couple of days ago, Moderna uh, announced that it started a, a clinical trial with a vaccine based on mRNA technology. It's important to say, though, that several years ago, GSK actually tried a, a vaccine and they had to stop the clinical trial because it reduced the incidence of mononucleosis, but not the actual Epstein-Barr infection. So I think here uh, we really have to take these results with a grain of salt because there's still so much we don't know about multiple sclerosis, unfortunately. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for telling us all about our health editor, Julia Seeger.